Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about traps. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are some well-known traps that software engineers fall into? Well, there's so many here, mm, but if I were to pick one, I would say that the most common trap that software engineers fall into is that they produce uh, ineffective uh, software. They create, they complicate uh, their own solution to the point where it becomes difficult to work with the system. And I've always, I, I always argue this. It's actually funny because I was talking to my mother. Well. She, uh, I was talking to my girlfriend's mother the other day, uh, yes, the other day, about this topic where, which, because she, they were expressing at her work, they were trying to have these like events and they were trying to sort of work with their uh, staff about, you know, making people happier at work. And I said, uh, I made the argument that, and she actually agreed a lot because, uh, and her father sort of joined in and said that the problem, uh, he said uh, that a customer cannot be happy if you have unhappy workers within the company. And I amended to that and I said that I believe that the key to effective, uh, to happy workers, or like the overall happiness at any place of work, is not found in what's popular today, which is to, as I like to say, you, cr you try to put a band-aid on a real, on a tumor where you try to have these after work, so like these sort of engagement initiatives in a probably in, in a company where everything is just falling together all the time like where nothing ever works everybody's always frustrated because you can never get things done and everything's always dysfunctional and as I like it's like nothing like you're trying to put the band-aid on a really really serious problem and people are not stupid it's fun for that half hour or hour you get a little bit of cake or something like that and then you stand around talking about how everything's going to change and never nothing ever changes because the other 40 hours that you work or like, like the the rest of the week or, or the month or whatever like that's still shit and that little thing like the little patch is not going to make that problem go away it's just a distraction this is nothing to to the average worker and so my argument is that if you want to have happy workers you have to have a well working organization and company structure which is almost beyond the average middle manager and that's the thing that we don't really want to talk about. The reality is that this thing that you're doing is only there because you have no, you don't have competent people who can actually solve the real problems. Because I argue, and that's I'm speaking for myself and everybody I've ever worked with, everybody loves working as part of a team or an organization where they feel like we're doing things right here. Things are working really well. You don't have to, I mean, then a Christmas party is nice, right? But on average, it's sort of like being in a football team that always loses. Nobody likes it. It does not matter what you do in the spare, your spare time or like after practice. But if you're always winning, you don't have to do a lot of extra stuff because it feels nice to be part of that. And so for software engineers, this is the biggest trap that they fall into. So what happens is they establish a project Somewhere along the lines, there are one of two things that happen usually, either through there because you deal with a philosopher, uh, a philosopher gets introduced into the mix, which is a very dangerous thing, or you uh, you have lazy code monkeys or people who don't actually produce uh, any, they don't have any any quality. Like they, um, I'm not saying that they're incompetent, but it comes down sometimes to incompetence really, or not caring. And what they do is that they establish a pattern of working within the system. They lack the experience to basically structure it for long-term de development and make, make they don't make a, a lot of good decisions. And so it, it, you create a suboptimal solution. And then the requirements keep on coming until they are forced to more and more hack things together, they have to make shortcuts, someone has a brilliant idea and then they complicate things even further which stops other work etc etc. It's like what I like to say. It, the analogy I usually use is that imagine that you have a uh, a cart and there's a wooden wheel that goes through 
some mud. And every time you run that thing for a mud uh, for a mud pile, uh, it's adding, it's reducing how efficiency efficient the wheel can turn, and that happens over and over and over until the wheel is so rusted shut, basically, that it can barely move. But by the time that that has happened, the cost of fixing the wheel is so high that people have already they've all it's almost it's not always I've actually seen this happen it's the first time the other um, uh, a while back now when I was uh, at a company that I was uh, working for it's the first time I've seen an example of how in this case they were using microservices so they had created this ridiculous microservices solution which was basically just it was a monolith but structured as a microservices architecture and it was so ineffective that they actually lost the company got so fed up with that everything took a million years for them to to do that they transferred the entire project to me and to my coworkers, so now it's our we be, and that basically means that now we have to undo that. <laughs> we have to fix it, and this happens, guys. This happens over and over and over, all the time. You have it's the number one pitfall for software engineers. Always, it's the thing that is the difference between a like a true master software developer and uh, well, pretty much everybody else. Because the problem with writing sustainable software that works over time is that it requires an enormous amount of talent. Because in order for you to be able to do it, one part is that you need to understand when a more sophisticated solution is necessary, when you need to figure out what is the right architecture for this situation, and when to say, all right, there are a lot of ideas flowing around of how we could do this, but most of them are actually not sustainable ideas they're just cool ideas or they're trends or they're this or they're that so you have you have two angles of attack that which can cause the situation one is that you have people who are ignorant like you have bad software developers or people who don't really know how to how to do this thing and so they I mean they do the best they can and they create something that doesn't really scale or it doesn't really work and then the problem can start coming that from that angle but then you have as I said the philosophers you have people who think that they're smarter than they are and they create a very they over engineer the problem and all of a sudden they create a solution that is very ineffective and doesn't work and now you have the same problem it and like this, the features keeps on growing. You simply you slow down the flow, the development velocity, and maintainability of the code. And the only people I know, this is what I argue is this is the mark, at least in my opinion, of a true senior software developer. They are the only people who can sustain software. In other words, maintain development velocity over time, because they are so good at what they do that they know what has to be done in order to maintain development velocity and what should be avoided to not slow it down. So what I want you to take away from this is that the, there are many traps that software engineers fall into guys and you're gonna fall into many of them everything from being super excited about uh, design principles or super excited about uh, design patterns or uh, things like that you're gonna go into some types of trends you're gonna fall into that I guarantee you you're going to start uh, thinking that something is the best idea ever and you're gonna try to apply it blindly to absolutely everything etc etc and then you're gonna realize that hey this is a lot of work when you start maturing a little bit you're going to try to solve everybody's problems by your co amazing coding skills only to realize that uh, you can't make progress not because you can't use technology to solve this just that nobody cares and you can't get people to listen to you and then you're gonna start to realize that holy shit everybody listens to me when they think I'm like a senior when I have the right title or I have done like the I have a CV or I have someone else vouching for me and then you realize that politics hey that's also important all of this stuff is gonna happen to you at some point and the thing that I personally like to say that everybody is this the biggest fall, trap that anybody can fall into and that's the one that the majority of companies and IT people fall into is uh, 
is the trap of legacy code or like legacy systems where either you have ignorant people who don't really know how to do things uh, who create like a shitty system that can't really scale or you have very very clever people or people who over engineer things to the point where it also becomes a shitty system and the effect is always the same you can come it from usually it's the one of these two angles that you attack uh, you cause the problem and the effect is always that you slow down and limit what the system can do. You, I promise you, you will know that you have this problem when people come asking you for features and it's difficult to make those features happen. Not because it's a difficult feature, but because the system can't really do it. I see this all the time. Things, like, things that are dirt simple for most systems are difficult for your system because your system is built in a way where this is really not going to work. And the amount of time it takes to develop, the happiness of the software development team, and the perceived quality of the system, all of that falls when you don't have people in place who know how to maintain development velocity and software quality over time. Have a great day.